Chapter 10. Friend. There is nobody home at Griffin's house. I thought you said your father would be here, Eric said. He works weird hours, Griffin explained. When I left, he was zonked out on that couch right there. He's probably out getting hammered, watching college football at the Tiki Bar and Grill. We're better off without him, believe me. What about your mother? She's away for a while, on a trip, Griffin answered vaguely. My older sisters moved out last year. They don't, they don't even come visit anymore. Not that I blame them. We've got the house to ourselves. I should check in with my mom, Eric said. Hey, don't let me stop you. She's not going to like that your folks aren't here, Eric warned. So lie, Griffin suggested. Lie? Griffin held his thumb and index finger a hair's breadth apart. Little white lie, he said. What are you, the good fairy? Eric made a face and dialed. Hi, Mom. Hey, sweetie. Do you need me to pick you up? No, we, um, that's why I'm calling, Eric explained. We decided to hang out at Griffin's house. What are you going to do over there? Do? Eric looked at Griffin, who made a few waves of his hand. Eric cracked a smile. Ping pong. Well, I don't have a problem with it. Are his parents home? His parents? Eric looked to Griffin, who signaled thumbs up. Yes, Eric said. Mr. Conley's here. Great. May I speak with him? You want to speak with him? Eric echoed. He looked at Griffin, who tilted his head up, began scrubbing his armpits, pretended to wash his hair. He's, um, I think he's in the, he's showering, Eric said. Showering, huh? Mrs. Hayes paused a beat, giving Eric's heart time to climb into his throat. I can ask him to call you later, he offered. No, I have to run out, Mrs. Hayes answered. Rudy has been invited to a bowling party. Can you believe that, kid? One month in town, and he's already Mr. Popularity. Besides, you have myself, remember? If you get home before me, I want you to do something constructive. Mom. I mean it. No TV, no electronics. Read a book. Clean your room. Practice your guitar. We'll be home around five. You know, Mom, Eric said, seizing the opening. This is why I need my own cell phone. He heard her sigh. <sighs> Maybe you're right. I don't know. We'll talk about it later. Love you. Eric glanced at Griffin. You too. And that was that. In one quick call, Eric had lied to his mother. He had to, he reasoned, or she would have never let him stay at Griffin's house. It wasn't like they were going to do anything bad. Your mother's old school, huh? Griffin noted. I guess so, if that means super strict. Don't sweat it, Griffin advised. You do good. She'll never know the difference. No harm, no foul. Eric nodded, shrugged it off as no big deal. I don't suppose you even have a ping pong table, do you? Griffin laughed, held his wrists out in front of his body. I confess, officer, you caught me. Go ahead, slap on the cuffs, haul me off to the big house. They climbed the stairs to Griffin's bedroom. Want to play video games? Griffin offered. I have a sick collection. He definitely did. It was another thing that Eric's mom was uptight about. Griffin had games that Eric wouldn't be allowed to play in a million years. This one is about an assassin from another galaxy, Griffin said, holding up the box. It's pretty wicked. He's got mad skills, lots of splurting blood, gushing up like geysers. It's hysterical. Do you want to play? Eric cautiously asked. Griffin threw the disc aside. Nah, not really. He looked around the room, gestured to a cage on his desk. We could torture my gerbil. For a minute, a second really, maybe less than that, Eric thought Griffin might be serious. They locked eyes and there was something there, a passing darkness. Then it was gone, like a storm cloud drifting away. Griffin smiled, laughed out loud. He was only joking. He reached for a dark wooden box about the size of a thick dictionary. Want to see a few of my souvenirs? Griffin asked it with obvious pride, but Eric had to hide his disappointment when he looked through the contents. It was a weird assortment of random stuff. Some kind of baseball pin, old coins, a pocket knife, a tooth, a couple of keys, a mishmash of junk. There's a story behind every one of those pieces, Griffin said. Oh yeah? Eric pointed to the tooth. What's the story with that? Griffin studied Eric's face. He took the box, snapped it shut, and returned it to the shelf. Maybe another time, he said. Sure, whatever, Eric answered, not knowing what else to say. They talked for a while. 
A long time had passed since Eric had a normal conversation with someone his own age. Griffin wanted to know all about Eric. He asked tons of questions, very curious, and Eric, to his surprise, answered all of them. So, Griffin said, your dad isn't around at all? Eric touched on the major parts of the tale, leaving out a few key details. He told Griffin how his father took off one day, a spontaneous decision that was a long time coming. It was like getting hit by a train, Eric told Griff. You could see it coming from miles down the track. You try to get ready for it, but when it hits you, wham, we're still all messed up. Eric added, I guess my mom got tired of waiting for him to get his act together, so we moved here. There was something about Griffin, the way he listened. Eric told Griffin things that he hadn't said to anyone, ever. For his part, Griffin was really nice about everything. He seemed to understand, like he'd already been there, like he could see inside Eric, and knew how he felt, even when Eric himself wasn't so sure. Griffin blew the hair out of his eyes. I guess it sucks to be you. Some days, yeah, it does. When it was time for Eric to go, the boys agreed to get together again, soon. Eric left the house with a sense of relief, like he just dropped off a heavy backpack. He kept so many things buried inside. It was good to finally say them out loud. Eric felt lighter. Sure, Griffin was a different kind of guy. There was no question about that. He had his rough edges. He wasn't like Eric's old friends back in Ohio. But for one day, during those few hours, Griffin was what Eric needed. He was, Eric believed, a friend.